Hello and a good morning, good afternoon and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're there, hope you're feeling grand and all's well in your world. Hello there, everybody. You are in Queenie Cam again, everybody. Hello, Queenie. Hello. It is that time of year again, everybody. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm not talking about Christmas, I'm not talking about New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, because New Year's Day is normally not very nice because you're hungover. Anyway! We're talking about the Dave Simpson Guitar Collection 2021 and Amp Collection. I'm going to try and cover it all in this one video. So without further ado, let's start here. Amplifiers. Okay, so Fender Deluxe Tone Master Reverb uh, Amp. No, that was wrong. Fender Deluxe Reverb Amp Tone Master. Love this amp to ridiculous proportions. It's literally amazing. You heard it in the intro jam, hopefully. I don't know, unless you enjoy jamming somewhere else, but we'll find out later. It sounds amazing, love this amp, never leave me, love it to bits. Moving along, RNCR120 in black, Tolwex, awesome amp, love it to bits. Below is the Orange Super Crush 100, new amp. Uh, these two, that's one of my oldest Marshall cabs in the world, that one. That's, I got that one in 2004. Uh, and this is a new acquisition. This is a new uh, Orange Crush Pro uh, Compact 412. Very, very cool. I've converted it to a 212 though, and I've got rid of the voice of the world speakers because I don't like them because they sound bad. And, well, to me anyway, and they don't do the amp justice. Anyway, so let's do first of guitars. The first guitar today is, oh, another amp as well, quickly before we get to guitars. Orange CR60 in the corner on top of the uh, Orange um, 412, 412 Compact, my first one. That's my main gigging cab, hence why it's in a rougher state than this one. That one's never been used. It's still got the tag on it. Look, Nigel Tufnell, eat your heart out. It's still got the tag on it. Okay, so first guitar of the day for the tube. So it's going to be a mix up between amps and guitars, this vid. First guitar of the day is the Legend Strat. I bought this guitar in France. Um, I, I think it was the end of last year. I think I had this this time last year. And uh, I love this guitar. This is another one of those ones that won't leave me because it's got so many memories attached to it because I got it in France. Bought it back from there. And uh, yeah, I just love it to bits. Sounds great, looks great, is great, rules the day. And I love the fact you can see the plywood body on the armware. Super cool. Okay, so moving along. Acoustic time. This is the first of many acoustics I have. This is a Honor. Uh, Western series. This is the M MW400N, and uh, I love this acoustic guitar. It sounds really good plugged for an electric amp, uh, a guitar amp for some reason. I don't really know why. It's very kind of arthritic and nothing kind of like everything's kind of falling off, as you as you can see. But it works and I love it and it sounds great. And it, this is the best playing acoustic I own. It plays like a dream. This one is the best playing acoustic I own. It's amazing. Moving along to the Sterling guitar by Music Man. If you've seen the video on this, this guitar blew my mind. I have never liked um, Ernie Ball guitars. I don't like the necks on them, but this one was a game changer for me. So absolutely amazing guitar, love it to bits. Still might gold top this some point next year. I don't know when I'm gonna get a chance to do that, but I'm thinking of gold topping it. Uh, leaving the back black, but having just the top gold and putting some uh, pickup covers on and uh, also having sur pickup surrounds as well. Um, and maybe getting a silver trem as well. Anyway, either way, that's what might be going on in the year. But this guitar is ridiculous. The neck on it's amazing. It just feels great, sounds great, is great, love it to bits. Mm, good guitar. Okay, so that's everything in here. Moving along now to another room. Okay, so uh, next amp on the agenda is my number one amp. This is the Fish. This is the Marshall MG. I got this in 2004 with this cab. My dad bought me it for my birthday, and this is basically the amp that I... It's like, Mr. this is the Mr. White of amps that I own. I, I own a lot of amps, as you're gonna see today, but this is the one that really started it all for me. I had a PB Rage and a Carlsbro, which you'll see uh, in a bit, but this one was the one that kind of went, that's it, you know, and started to give me the sound I wanted and uh, I love it to bits and it sits here and I've done so, I've so many recordings. I've nearly had this amp for 20 years 
In 2024, I've had this amp for 20 years. That's crazy. Anyway, so moving over to this wall, follow me. So first guitar over here. Um, hopefully you can see this if I hold it in the light. This is the BC Rich Mockingbird Plus. Always wanted a Mockingbird. It's mental to actually finally have one. This thing is an absolute beast. The neck's perfect. The Floyd is perfect. The pickups are perfect. The sound is amazing. It's got a really awesome blues tone. So I'm going to take this to a blues jam at some point and freak people out. And, and it's got a gorgeous top as well. The um, I don't know what wood that is, but it's absolutely stunning, whatever it is. It looks like a piece of art. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that on the camera that close because it blurs, but hopefully you'll be able to see it enough. Anyway, moving along to Mr. V. Hang him, stay there. Okay, so this is the V my friend Mike gave me. I say, uh, Mr. Bob gave me the Mockingbird. This is a Mike guitar. This is one of those Vs that, like, you know, is just perfect for me. We've got Coil Tappable on a Push Push thing, uh, volume, uh, volume finish pickup, three way selector. Got the, the uh, what are they called? The Broller Tremolo. That's awesome. It's got a roller bridge as well, so it stays in tune really well. The neck on this thing is an absolute tree trunk, but it's so comfortable. The only thing that's weird is the, it's like when you put it on, the strap sits back there, but it's, it's all right. Great for those metal moments, but it, I don't use it for that. It's a great blues guitar, this, and I love the fact it looks like Jimi Hendrix's. So, uh, yeah, this guitar rules. Mike, thank you very much indeed. Love this guitar. Again, hopefully never have to get, let go of this guitar because I want, I really want to keep it for the rest of my life. So hang that back up on the wall. Stay there. Okay, moving along to guitar rack. We're knackered yet, I am. Okay, so number one guitar in the guitar is the Oswald T type guitar. This is the guitar, this is the second guitar Nick made for me. Because uh, I wanted a Telecaster, but well, Nick offered to build me a Telecaster because he had heard I didn't get on with them usually because they're so thick in the body and this and the other. I just I didn't get along with them, so we made it thinner, and we also put an arm contour on it and also a belly cut on it as well. Uh, and I really wanted it like a Blackguard. Um, a lot of people kind of said, "Why didn't you get the John Frusciante Sunburst one with the, the double bound?" But I don't really like them as much as I like the Blackguards. So we, uh, we basically got a Blackguard uh, Telecaster copy. Um, Nick's pickups. This is the best Telecaster in the world to me. Um, I just love it. It's just perfect in every way. And the neck is a clone of Mr. White, my white strap, which you'll see later. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And it's really faded. It is still yellow, but only just. Anyway, UV light. So moving along to the first ever Oswald that Nick made to me. And this one has uh, is a bit more beaten up now, but this is the first guitar that Nick made me uh, back uh, in 2017. Uh, I think he started making this 2016 though. And um, literally he messaged me out of the blue and said, I want to build you a guitar. And I was like, well, I've always wanted a 50s Strat, like John Frusciante is 54, 55. Uh, but I don't like V-necks. And he was like, well, I don't have to do that. Um, so he, he built this for me. And this, this guitar has seen a lot of use. All the wear you see on this guitar is not me relicking it. Uh, as people know, I like to relic guitars. But I don't have to relic this one. All the wear on this guitar is actually through use and gigging, basically. Uh, I've gone through the lacquer on the fingerboard. I don't think you'll be able to see that on this camera, sadly. But... This guitar is amazing. It's got evil sheet pickups. It originally came with Seymour Duncan SSL ones, but I don't like them. So I got it replaced with evil sheeps. These are amazing. They're a custom set. They're like a 54, 55 kind of set. Pickups are amazing. Other than that, the entire guitar is stock. Oh, and I changed the guard to a single ply guard, which is now properly off, gone off color. It used to be white. It ain't so much anymore. But this is the first ever Oswald that I got. And I think this is, I don't know if this is the first, this isn't the first guitar Nick made, but this is the first guitar I think he made kind of like to give, if, if that makes any sense. Anyway, Nick, forever grateful. And forever grateful for this next one. So the next guitar 
It's probably the most gorgeous guitar I own. I, I don't even know how to say anything about this guitar other than the fact it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it won't come across on camera because when you see this thing in person, it blows your mind. But it's absolutely stunning. We've got a fully rosewood neck on this thing, uh, roasted ash body, it's all lacquered. Nix 64 set pickups, it's got a three-way selector. Uh, highwood saddle, highwood saddle bridge, uh, steel block. I think it's a, I don't remember what the, the tremor actually is actually, but it's absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, just, just take it in. I wish you could see this in person, people with you, because this guitar is just heaven. And it plays like nobody's business. It's just too easy to play. It's so good. Anyway. Moving along to a guitar that, again, blew my mind. This is my Ibanez Gem Junior. This guitar, uh, the monkey grip's really handy for this. This guitar was one of those guitars that I bought and was going to basically do a video on and then sell. But I'm never selling this guitar. Uh, I have relicked it. We've, I've got a custom green, mint green scratch plate on this thing. Um, it's just literally ridiculous. And this is the guitar, actually, people are true. Out of all the guitars I own, and you'll see today, this is the guitar that I can play the easiest on out of all of them. I, I can literally do anything on this guitar. It lets me do anything. It's insane. It's all stock, like I say, apart from the scratch plate and obviously the relic job. Other than that, I haven't touched a thing. The pickups are original, the pots are original, select switch is original. It's not, it's Ibanez's kind of version of a Floyd on there. Um, it's not been refretted, different locking, no, nothing. It's all stock apart from a relic job and a scratch plate. Oh, and I got rid of a back plate because, you know, they're useless and pathetic and why are they even there? Anyway, awesome guitars. Highly recommend the Gem Juniors as well. Anyway, moving along. Just got a bit more relic. Okay, so moving along. Oh, yeah, you need to undo that, baby. To my Squire Vintage Modified Jaguar. This was originally surf, uh, seafoam green. Uh, I refinished it in white, put a tortoiseshell guard on it, and sprayed the headstock white and put a Fender logo on it as well. The Squire logo is still underneath it. And I don't advertise this as a Fender. It's definitely a Squire, as you can see in the neck plate. But this is the, this is the Jaguar I always wanted. And this is literally the Jaguar. Um, I really want a Fiesta Red one though. It's not like my Telecaster where that's that's it, that's me sorted. I do want a Fiesta Red Jaguar to be like John Fashanti. Geek alert! Um, but this guitar really, it sounds great, plays great, is great, love it to bits. Uh, it's, it's, again, there's no relicking job on this one, but it is a bit worn in. Uh, I refinished it in nitro actually, it's, it's a nitro finish. And you can actually see the wood grain underneath, it, but you won't be able to on the camera sadly. But this guitar's amazing. Absolutely love it to bits. So, moving on to the last instrument in the room here. Because uh, it's not a guitar. This one's missing two strings. Uh, this is my Columbus Jazz Bass from the 70s. Uh, I got this bass quite a while ago. It, 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 didn't, it didn't play ball when I first got it. The neck was like a banana. It was just a nightmare. The neck was actually an absolute tree trunk as well. I've recarved the neck now to be a lot more s slimmer and more comfortable. Uh, but this thing's amazing. This has basically been on and any recording you've heard on my channel that's not Queenie on bass. It's this bass and it's me, which is why it's not very good. Anyway, but this bass sounds amazing. I love it to bits. Queenie's got a really cool video on this. Um, and it's just a mega, mega, mega thing. It does need a new nut though, but love it to bits. Okay, so. <sighs> Tired yet? Let's move on to the next, the next room. Next load of guitars. Okay, so next room. Yes, all these have guitars in them as well. Okay, starting with the first one. My lord, people of YouTube, you think I've got enough? Okay, so number one is the Brian May guitar, gift from my friend Bob. This one's really cool, I love the fact the serial number is 001. So this is the first one of this run they made. Um, absolutely gorgeous guitar, really cool. Comes in its Brian May bag. Uh, I've got it strung up in uh, eight as well, so like Brian, but really cool guitar. Okay, so uh, let's start here. This is going to be fun. Okay. 
<sighs> Number one is the Battocaster. Uh, people who have been on this channel long enough will have known this guitar. Well, uh, it's still here. I won't be getting rid of this guitar. The only reason it's not out at this point in time is the selector switch is broken. So the guitar doesn't actually work. It doesn't make noise anymore, sadly. But hopefully, I will get a new selector switch for it and new electronics and I can actually use it. But this thing is amazing. It's got a gorgeous flame maple neck, which I don't think you'll be able to see. But it's got a really nice figured neck. Um, but this thing has been... It's called the Battercaster because, yeah... It's been absolutely battered. Uh, somebody's attacked this with a heat gun, a chisel, and a knife. Uh, it's had an hard life, bless it. But it works, and I love it. And it's sat when it works, these pickups sound great. They're just little ceramic things. But it's a Jim Harley guitar. I've never seen another one. Never even heard of it. Anyway, number one. Moving along. Okay, next one. This is actually uh, my 1962 Fender Strats case, but uh, the 62 isn't in it, um, as it's always out. Okay, so this is the 1984 Tokai Gold Star sound, and it's just absolutely stunning guitar. It's away because I don't have any space for it to be out right now, and uh, it does. it's just an amazing guitar, it really is. It needs new strings though, because these are knackered. Um, but this is an amazing guitar. In all fairness, it pains me to have it in a case, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. I, I love this guitar, but, you know, I, I, I just don't have space, unfortunately. I need a mansion. I need, to be, I need to be rich and famous and live in a mansion where I can have all my guitars. Or, like Joe Bonamassa, have an entire house dedicated to all my gear. That'd be nice. Joe! Anyway, um, yeah, so 1984 Tokai Gold Star. Absolutely stunning guitar rivals any fender and this 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 is a, a reissue of like a 64 strat 64 65 and this is literally on the net on the nose of a 64 65 strat. it feels pretty much identical it's really really weird veneer fretboard pearl inlays it's just insane absolutely insane so moving along so talk eye there Move along. I don't remember what's in what, but I do need to start stacking these cases over here so I can get to the ones behind. It's a two-tier system. Okay, so this is going to be fun. I don't know how well. There might be a cut in here, people would you, because this might get a bit silly. So, moving along to the Selma Croc skin case, which I bought this year. This is... I've been... I've, what, well... The 64 case that you just saw the Tokai in, that's actually a Selma Croc skin as well, but uh, it got refinished uh, by Malcolm. So here we have the 100,000 subscribers giveaway guitar. This is the Gravy Caster, hence the head song. Uh, this guitar will be given away when I reach 100,000 subscribers. I'm kind of terrified how much it's gonna cost me to send this thing around the world, but all will be well. My bank account won't like it, but uh, all will be well. But this is a, a guitar kit that Nick, uh, Master Nick Oswald get, got me in lockdown to build. And I've hand painted this, uh, relicked it. Uh, I put a green guard in it. It's got all stock electronics. It's got a Wilkinson tremolo on it, that's amazing. Um, it's got some really good machine on it, machine heads on it as well. But this guitar is really cool. And I kind of don't really want to give it away because I love it so much, but it's in a case so I don't get overly attached to it because that can happen and um, so I don't really play this too much I've played it a lot but I don't play it too much anymore because as the 100,000 thing looms I get kind of a bit edgy about giving you know, I, I don't want to get too attached to give uh, to it to not be able to give it away so that's that guitar awesome guitar though sounds amazing feels amazing is amazing okay moving along from this guitar Okay, so how am I going to do this? I might have to start stacking things. <laughs> There's not enough space in this tiny little attic room. Okay, so moving along. Ugh. Okay, next hard case. What are we going in? I'm moving backwards, aren't I? Okay, so here's my Jimmy caster. This is a Jimmy left-handed guitar, strung right-handed. No. Yeah, strung right-handed, upside down, refinished in, like, nitro. And, uh, yeah, just... Cool guitar. Don't play this a great deal because it's awkward to play because I always friend forever knocking the tone dials. I'm actually going to rewire it someday when I can. 
Uh, this has got evil sheep pickups in it as well. It's got evil sheep uh, experience pickups in it. Can you guess who they're modeled on? Anyway, the Jimmy Strat, everybody. This started life as a squire as well. It was an anniversary squire and uh, basically modded to the max now. Okay, move along. Next guitar. Oh. Is the Chapman. What is this called? The ML3 Pro. This is up here at this point in time because uh, I'm not getting along with it as well as I did when I first got it. I still love this guitar. I don't want to get rid of this guitar. I still like the way it is. I just need to change the volume pot to a one meg. It's got, it's just a bit too dull and dark and it had a 250k pot in it when I got it and that's cool. But I kind of want to keep the pickups, which was the first thing I was going to change. But then on the other Chapman, the, the, the Pro X, <laughs> I changed the volume pot from a 500k to, a, uh, to a, a 1 meg. And it bought that guitar alive. Anyway, I put that 500 pot, 500k pot from the Chapman Pro X in here. And it made it better, but it's not quite there. So I want to get a 1 meg pot for this guitar. And see how this goes. So until then, this one's put away because um, I don't particularly like the way it sounds. The way it plays, the way it looks, amazing. It reminds me of a grand piano. Uh, but I'm not happy with the sound, so that's why it's up here at this point in time. So, moving along. I'm getting a bit scared now. I'm going to have to stand up by that. Okay, so. Tweed case. Ugh. Bang my elbow. This is actually crazy. I hope you're enjoying this people of the tube. I really do. Okay, so this is a vintage V6 icon. It's an old one. My friend Bob gave me this. And uh, me, me and my friend Nicole Marjo, we refinished this guitar. And uh, this actually doesn't work at this point in time. The bridge pickup is dead. I don't really know what's wrong with it, but it doesn't actually work. Hence why it's up here and not out. But this is one of those guitars that means a lot to me uh, because like I say Bob gave me it as a gift. It was originally black. And then when Marjorie and Nicole came over to visit me, we refinished it in this off-white colour and they uh, wrote on the back. So you can see um, I got like some doodles on the back. So this guitar is, is really kind of... Um, actually, I'm going to take a strap. I need, I need the strap, though. I've been looking for this strap. Um, this guitar, it's got a lot of meaning to me, so it's important. But I don't really play it, like I say, because I don't really want to wreck it but I, I i won't ever get rid of it okay but i do need that strap though so okay so moving along got to get over here so this is going to get interesting because this room is tiny queen is like rammed into that corner and i'm kind of rammed into this corner okay so moving along Ugh! to another chapman guitar that's up here uh where are we okay so this is the chapman uh what is it the ml1 no, ML, yeah, ML1 traditional. And um, again, this guitar would be out if I had the space for it to be out, but I don't have the space for it to be out. But this is one of my favourite guitars I own. Uh, people probably say, well, why is it in the case in the attic? Because I don't have the space to have it out. As simple as that. And But I still love it. And it, it's just amazing. Um, it's ridiculous. Another reason I don't want to play it too much is because Lee... Uh, Lee Anderton signed it and I don't want to wear the signature off so and I want to get Rob to sign this guitar at some point as well uh, because if it weren't for them to I wouldn't be doing the YouTube thing you know so I really want Rob to sign this guitar when I get a chance and that's another reason why I don't like to play it too much I don't want to lose those signatures but this is one of my favourite guitars I own and again another one of those guitars that I'll never get rid of okay and it's just gorgeous it's just gorgeous okay so moving along into I don't know territory anymore Ugh. I'm gradually barricading myself into the corner here. So what we got in here? Oh, the Silver Surfer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is just a cheapo guitar that I just decided I'm going to cover in silver tape. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's got these uh, kind of uh, hot rail kind of humbucker single coils. But my god, this guitar is so good. It really is. I love it to bits. And it's an absolute monstrosity now. I bet that's really glaring the camera out. But that's all good. Love this guitar. Really cool. It is what it is. Okay. Enough of that. 
moving along. It's not, by the way, that's why I moved it forwards. What, sorry? Because <laughs> the, uh, the window's oh. right there, so it's coming oh. down, but when I move it forwards, it doesn't glare as much. Oh, okay, good, good. That, that's empty, so <laughs> that's okay. And I think this one's empty as well. Yeah, okay, so them two are empty cases. I do have empty cases, believe it or not. I didn't think I did, but that's okay, that's good, that's good. Makes it easier. Okay, so moving along, uh, let's, well, we'll go here and we'll do the big cases last because they're humongous. Is there anything in this one? This is my acoustic case, but I don't know if there's anything in it. Um, let's have a look. It's like show and tell. Yes, this is my sister's Admira nylon string. This is the guitar that started it all for me, basically. I heard her playing the, a, a Cajun tune on this guitar, this very guitar, and I was like, teach me something on this guitar. And basically, until I got my first electric guitar, this was it. So this is where I started. This is literally where I started. Uh, it's all strung up, it's probably not in tune. Well, it's pretty close. And I love it. Uh, for a long time, it was kind of like in a bit of a state of disrepair, but I, I've cleaned it all up, restrung it, set it up, and now it lives up here because I don't want anything to happen to it. So that's where I started, people too. That is the first guitar for me. That's where this guitar addiction started for me. Okay, so um, that's then they're nothing. They're just empty uh, acoustic cases. I'm thinking that one might fit Queenie's new acoustic bass. Okay, so moving along. This isn't my guitar either, but it's lived here for my entire entire guitar playing life. So this is my cousin's 1962 Hofner Very Fin. Absolutely stunning looking guitar, but plays like a rabid dog. It's not a very nice guitar to play, but it's very, very cool to have. But um, it's not a guitar that I am in, I'm interested in playing, hence why it's in the case. It's a very gorgeous guitar though, nice to have, 1962, but it lives in a case because it just doesn't play very well. It sounds very harsh as well. The net pickup's nice, but this pickup's horrible. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it resonates well though, as we just heard. Okay, 962 Hoffman, very thin, moving along. How am I gonna get out of this corner? With great difficulty, I understand. Okay, so moving along, another case. Way I'm getting attacked by the Hoffner, he's having a go at me, you see. You what, David? You said what? Okay, so this is the second to last. Yeah, because that's empty. Uh, this is the second to last guitar up here. This is the Mint Condition Tysco Audition, which I don't play because it is Mint con Condition. That's why it's up here in a case. And this is my first ever hard case, actually. Uh, my dad bought me this when I first, in 2016, for my uh, Washburn. But this thing is... It's the model 7001, because it's one pickup, but it's absolutely pristine. There's no scratches, no dints, dents, anything on this thing. It's got the arm, got the trauma, it's got the original tone and volume knobs, here, including markers, uh, original frets. It's got the Audition sticker, still just will rod, original machine heads. This thing just has never been played. And as a result, like I say, it lives in this case because I just, I just don't, I just don't want to play it. I don't want to be the one to beat it up because it is literally factory showroom condition. And I don't normally get that funny about guitars. Normally, I don't really care if it, if it is that. I'm going to play it regardless. But I've never seen one. I've ne I've seen a lot of Tysco because I love them so much. But I've never seen a Tysco audition in this condition. And as a result of that, this one, it makes this one really special. So it stays in the case. Uh, and it's the only guitar I've got, actually, that I am that way with. Out of all the guitars you're going to see today, this is the only guitar that I'm funny about condition with. Other than that, I can't give a monkeys. But uh, this one, yeah, I don't, want, I don't want anything to happen to that one. Uh, funny enough, you'll see a guitar later on, actually, that I got instead of this, in, instead of this. Uh, to actually, so I could play it, and you'll see that in a bit. Anyway, last one, last one for this room, and it's a bass. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift this up on there because this is really heavy. Ugh, this is going to be fun. Okay, 
Now, if you go over to Queenie's channel, she's got a video on this bass, but it lives here. So if any of you know a band called And Also The Trees, this is a bit of their musical history. So their original bass player, I have his P bass. And it's not a Fender, it's a Hondo 2. But this is it. And Queenie's got video on this and the other guitar we got from the original bass player of And Also The Trees. And this is basically the bass that they used to start with. And for all the time, this bass player was with the band. He eventually got thrown out of the band because basically he was a bit of a wild child, as we understand it. We don't know what happened to him, though. We don't understand why his bass has disappeared. Uh, in here... We got the original strap. He kept his plectrums in a um, well, a, ta a cassette tape thing. And we also have spare strings as well, Roto Sound strings. But this bass is amazing. I love it to bits. Um, and it's cool little bit of history to think that this has been in the same studio as Robert Smith of The Cure. Uh, but like I say, Queenie's got a cool video on this bass where she plays it and you can hear it. And this thing sounds like their original demos. But it's so cool to have it, and I love it. And again, original case, because it's got the, and also the trees kind of stencil there. And now if I open the case, like again, it's on the base. And it's just a really cool piece of history, and it sounds great. Uh, it's very, very worn. Uh, I'll show you the back quick, actually. You can see there's a lot of buckle rash on this thing. But it's a great base. The, the, the neck is humongous on it. It's an absolute tank of a neck. But it's an amazing bass. I love it. It reminds me of Phil Lynott's bass. It reminds me of the Stranglers bass, player's bass. I can never remember his JJ name. JJ Burnell. JJ Burnell. Thank you very much. Of course, Queenie's going to know it. Um, it's just so cool. So cool to have it. And I'm very, very happy uh, to own this. I'm very, very honoured to own this. But again, it stays in the case because, again, I don't really want anything to happen to this. So, uh, and also, don't have space for it. <laughs> I just don't have space for all these instruments. If I could... None of these would be in their cases. None would be in their cases. I would have none of these guitars in cases. They'd be all out. They'd all be in guitar racks. But don't have that space. So, unfortunately, I have to make sacrifices. Hence why some of these in cases I don't want to be in cases. But are the Tokai, the Chapman, Telecaster. Um, some of the other ones. You know, I don't want them in cases. But I have to because, again, space. Okay, so anyway. Moving on to the next room. We're about... Nearly halfway. Nearly. Okay, so next room now, people tube. We're going to start... Well, we just saw a Hondo 2 P bass. Now it's a Hondo 2 Stratocaster. So this, again, is a 1970s Hondo 2. It's been messed with and modified. Uh, when I got it... it well, it, it's, it's needed a lot of work. Let's just put it that way. I might do a video on this. Recently had it refretted. My friend Mike refretted this thing. It's so nice that it plays now. It never played. The frets were always knackered. It's got a new nut. Uh, the bridge has been moved. It's all intonated. Uh, the pickups on this thing are amazing. It's all the original electronics. Original neck. Amazing guitar, this one. It's got shallow machine heads. Hardtailed. Somebody hardtailed it. It was a hardtail to start with, but some. if you look at Hondo 2 Strat on Google, it doesn't look like this. Let's put it that way. Anyway, so this video is going to be this room is going to be a combination of guitars and amps so we'll go down here now to katana town okay so first one is the mark ii katana artist i think that's literally my dream amp uh it's just ridiculously amazing next one boss katana uh 100 mark one and then there's a boss katana mark uh 50 mark one uh, i've got them all basically because i'm addicted to katanas um in the corner here, we have the, uh, apart from Queenie's food, um, we have my Marshall AS50R acoustic amp. This thing, if you want an acoustic amp, get one of those. They're absolutely amazing. Absolutely love that amp. I've actually got my record player running through it as well because it just sounds amazing. It's a stereo amp. You've got two 8-inch speakers, and it's a beast. 50 watt, spring reverb, jobs are good in. Uh, up here, we have the Audition 3 watt Tysco amp. And it's amazing. I've also got the 15 watt, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, before we go anywhere, I can't fail to acknowledge the, uh, the good gravy fuzz. Can we get that in shot? Yeah. Yay! Good gravy fuzz, everybody. Oh, and also, Cathedral Guitar Strings. These are original, unopened 
really old guitar strings and they're horrific. You wouldn't want them on your guitar. Okay, so um, moving up now. This is my uh, Echo 12 string. Uh, my friend John from Old Hat, who I used to work with Old Hat, uh, gave me this guitar. Love it to bits. Sounds great, is great. It's had absolute, the, the snot kicked out of it, but it's amazing. Uh, great guitar, sounds great. When it's in tune, it stays in tune, uh, but it's hard to keep it in tune. Let's put it that way, it's a bit of a nightmare. So moving on, that trust rod's cover's moved. Uh, this is, well, we'll do this one now. It's missing its high E because somebody's bust it and now I have to replace it. I'm not happy about that at all. This is the Mountain Acoustic Mount Martin Ripoff guitar. Uh, I've done a video on this. It's absolutely amazing. One of my favourite acoustics, this one. It's not the easiest acoustic to play, I've got to say, it, but it's one of the nicest sounding. But it's not in tune because, of course, it's not. Uh, <laughs> It's, but it's, it, when, it, when it's in tune, it sounds great. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> you go down there. Moving back up here. This is my number one acoustic for many years. It's a bit fragile and a bit knackered now, sadly. Uh, I've had to re-glue the bridge. Uh, I've had to sort out some of the frets on it, but it's an amazing guitar. This is my Tanglewood Premier Series guitar, and I love it to bits. It's actually my favourite acoustic I own. It's not the easiest guitar acoustic to play, that's the Honor, but this is my favourite acoustic that I own. It's just ace, and I love it. Plays like a dream. Moving along, I would love to play every single one of these guitars for you as well, people do, but as you can see, if I did, we'd be here until we all died of boredom. Anyway, which would be never. Yeah, or never. Okay, so moving along. This is my dad's acoustic guitar from, I don't know when, 50s, 60s, maybe, I don't know. It's very old, very beaten up. Again, broken high E string. There's a, there's a theme going on here, can you tell? But it's an amazing guitar. Sounds great. It's got a real kind of Robert Johnson y kind of vibe to it. And it's very, very worn out. I don't know if you can see the fretboard. Let me just, uh, if I take the camera off Queenie a sec, look at it, I'll show you. That's a lot of play wear. <laughs> right, hand the, the camera back to Queens. Slight height advantage there. Yes, well, you know, moving along. <laughs> so this is my Kawhi uh, nylon string acoustic. And I forget if this is 70s or 60s. For some reason, my brain's saying it's 1964, but I feel it's 1974. I don't remember. But um, it's an amazing nylon string guitar. I have this in C standard tuning, so... And for some reason, that tuning makes this guitar sing. And I just love it to bits. And funny enough, this is, I really wanted a nylon string uh, to get back into kind of playing nylon string guitar after I saw my friend Christina play. And this was the first one I went to buy. Uh, and it was like 40 quid. And when I got it home, it was in this slack open C tuning. And it just sounded amazing. And when I got it electrified, because it's got a pickup in the, it's got a piezo in the bridge. When I got it electrified, it didn't, sound any good in standard tuning but i put it back to c, st c standard and it just worked so well so it stayed in c standard and i bought another one to take place of the standard uh tuning one and you'll see that in a bit but kawaii 60s 70s i forget what it is i, I was going to look it up but because i'm an idiot i forgot <laughs> but it's an amazing nylon string guitar love it to bits okay moving on next wall we'll do guitars first and then we'll move on to amplifiers <laughs> no one should ever get that close to my face Okay, so moving Queenie's coat. Vintage V100 PGM. Peter Green model. This guitar I've had for ages now. And if you've been around this channel a long time, you, you, you'll know this guitar and you'll, you've seen it a lot. It's been through a lot of incantations. I've had the pickup covers off. It had a scratch plate. Uh, the pickup pick was a right way round. Pickup covers were back on. Then we're off again. Then they're on. It's been messed with. Uh, the wiring's totally different now. I've got a master volume, master tone, coil tap, and that does nothing. Uh, but the original pickups, original hardware, uh, everything else. But this guitar has been around here for a long time. And when Peter passed away, it went back to its original form. No scratch plate, pickup back reversed, and it will never change again. Because, again, it's Peter's guitar. And I used this, actually, on recording the Dave Simpson Trio album free on the song The Green Blues, because... Peter Green model had to be used. 
So, that's the Peter Green Vintage V100. Lovely guitar, absolutely stunning. Just ridiculously great. Okay, moving along to my first ever Les Paul. I've nearly had this guitar 20 years as well now. This is my Epiphone Les Paul that my mum and dad bought me for my birthday. I'd have been it my, my 17th birthday. So it was a year after I, I, I started playing guitar, I got this guitar. And in all fairness, it's not very good. <laughs> The pickups are terrible. The electrics are terrible. Um, it play the neck's good, and it plays like a dream. It's got itself at this point in time actually with Billy Gibbons gauge seven strings on it. So they're, they're literally there's nothing to these, and it's in E flat as well. So you can imagine what it's like to play. You can actually get like um, I think it's like a free tone bend out of the strings. It's amazing. <laughs> you can actually bend the first fret as well. It's cool. But um, this guitar isn't very good. I don't really play this, but I'd never get rid of it because of, you know, sentimental value. Uh, but I've nearly had this guitar. So I'd have got this guitar in 2022. So next year I've had this guitar 20 years. No. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's 20 years, isn't it? 2022? Mm -hmm. 2023. When did you say you got it? Oh, no, sorry. 2023 I got this guitar. So that, that would be 20 when, years. When did you say you got it? 2003. Yeah, so yeah, 2023. 2023. It's 20 years. Figurings. We're good at mathematics as musicians. Anyway, this has got eight pickups, um, eight knobs and dials. Big comedian, David. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but it's no phone less ball. It's a standard. You know, it, it, it's cool, but I don't really like cherry burst. But again, never get rid of it because it's important to me. Moving on to another less ball I will never get rid of. This is the Revelation RTL 59. This is my best Les Paul, bar none. That is just ridiculous. It sounds and feels and plays great. Uh, it was, it did look like the Epiphone next to it, but I stripped the top off with a heat gun. And now it looks like that. It's kind of Mick Ronson, kind of Paul Kossoff kind of thing, but it's literally ridiculous. These Ent Whistle pickups are amazing. I love the fact that the dials are this way, not that way. As you can see, they're different between the uh, like a, a Gibson style and the Revelation up there, the way like PRS. The neck on this thing is like a real old vintage, it really feels like an old vintage Gibson neck. It's mental, it's so close to an old vintage. Uh, 59 uh, Les Paul, it's crazy. And even the sound as well, this thing actually does sound like a Telecaster on steroids, which is what they all did sound like. This sounds like it's underwater, several, several hundred leagues. This one sounds immense, but I love this guitar. Best Les Paul I own. Take some beat in that one. Okay, moving along to the next Les Paul. This is the Epiphony. Because it's not a real Epiphony, it's a fake. Black Beauty. Free, uh, free pickup custom guitar. And again, it's not a real Les Paul, a uh, real Epiphony. I thought it was. I got it back, I took some pictures, put it on Facebook, and people were saying, that doesn't look right, Dave. And lo and behold, it isn't. And it taught me a lesson. It taught me kind of like, you know, how to spot a fake Epiphone. Uh, and I've got a video on that somewhere. But is it, this is one hell of an amazing guitar. This is actually the best Epiphone I've ever played. And it's not even an Epiphone. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't get on with Epiphones. I do love the way they look sometimes, but I just don't get on with them. But this one is amazing. And I love the fact it's not actually an Epiphone. <laughs> okay, so uh, if, if we switch places, Queenie. <laughs> Okay, so moving along, another Hondo 2, everybody. I have three Hondo 2s. This is a Hondo 2 Les Paul Custom. Uh, I got this this year with, uh, for a trade with um, a, a guy called Dr. Nerd. He's got another YouTube channel. And he restored this guitar. It was just basically bits when he got it. And he did the most amazing job getting this thing restored uh, and back up and playing. And it literally is one of the best sounding, best playing Les Pauls. It's so cool. I don't know the age of this. I don't know if it's late 70s or early 80s, but it's such an amazing guitar, and I'm very honoured to own it. And uh, funny enough, the next guitar... Well, not next guitar. Well, actually, yeah, I'll go to the next guitar. I'll show you in a sec. The guy who owned this originally, not Dr. Nerd, owned the next guitar I'm going to show you as well. But yeah, I have three Hondo 2s. Uh, uh, say I've got a Les Paul, Strat, and a P-Bass. Absolutely amazing. Love this guitar. Just looks stunning. It's one of the coolest... Uh, tobacco bursts I've ever seen as well and these bits of mother of pearl are hiding holes in the top but this thing isn't plywood it's a mahogany bodied guitar this isn't one of the plywood ones this is actually heavy as they come and it's a proper 
proper mahogany uh, body uh, guitar. It is chambered though, so it's not ridiculously heavy. It's not like as heavy as that, but it is still very, very heavy, and it's got some chunk to it. So that guitar, that guy who owned this guitar, also owned this guitar here, and this is a Zenta Tysco guitar, and I've never seen another one of these, but it's absolutely amazing. There's my shadow. Um, but he basically what the guy did unfortunately he passed away uh he restored these things and this is one that he actually finished um i'm not sure if he refretted it or what but either way this guitar is amazing uh again i have videos on all these guitars people youtube so if there's any that take your fancy that you're interested at looking at deeper i do have videos on all these guitars so but, but yeah this is a zenta it's a taisco japanese made guitar from the 70s absolutely amazing guitar stunning so moving along, might as well go here now because we're here. This is the Chapman Pro X. And this is my main gigging guitar. I love this guitar ridiculously. Uh, I've had the selector switch moved. It was there originally, but I don't like that because when the tremolo arm's out, I can't get it to it. Uh, I've got a three-way selector in it as well, not a five-way. I've got a one meg pot, volume pot to brighten up the Seymour Duncans. Uh, I'm not really a big Seymour Duncan fan, but I really like the way this guitar sounds with the one meg pot in it. Uh, it's, still, it's still got the standard 500k uh, tone pot on it. Um, other than that, this guitar's stock, uh, apart from I've taken the back plate off, because again, useless bits of plastic. Uh, it's had a different back cover on it as well to accommodate the uh, selector switch. But this guitar's amazing, absolutely amazing. It's starting to get a few dints and dents, and it might have got kicked across the floor the other night at a gig but hey uh, that happens when you get carried away in a moment this guitar is amazing the neck on this thing is just to die for well the top as well this guitar in its in itself is just to die for it's just incredible really is absolutely incredible guitar and it's starting to be a bit get a bit beaten up now which is good because it every time it gets a bit more beaten up it feels better okay moving along so um we're going to the corner now so I don't know how well you'll be able to see this one, but this is a Columbus 335 copy. It's actually brown. And again, I do have video on this, uh, but it's a, basically a lawsuit model guitar. What I mean by lawsuit is basically these guitars were made in, ja in Japan in the 70s. So this is another 70s guitar. And basically they were um, rip-offs of Gibson's uh, for, a very, you know, for a fraction of the price. And Gibson came along like, no. And hence these were called lawsuits. But this is an exact to the measurement copy of a Gibson 335, the neck, the headstock. It's got the open book headstock. Everything about this is exactly like a 335, which hat knobs, amazing pickups. Uh, it's totally hollow though. There is no center block to this 335. So it's more like a 330 uh, in a way, but it's got the block inlays. It's like a 64, 65 335. And it's basically a copy of their walnut ones, the brown kind of thingy ones. Okay, so moving along. That's Saint Rick. Can you get him? Just about. Uh, there we go. He's too holy. There we he go. He is too holy. He's too shiny. Okay, so that's Saint Rick there. Moving along to guitars. We'll do guitars actually, and then we'll come back to amps. So this is the Jet JS300, one of the best budget guitars ever made, bar none. I broke the high E string. Again, common theme going on here, Dave, isn't there? I'm not very good with high E strings, but um, this guitar's amazing. This is actually my number two for gigging now, next to the Chapman. This is my standard tuning guitar. The Chapman's always in E flat, and this is standard tuning, and these are basically my two gigging guitars. But again, I need to restring it now because we're missing Mr. High E. Um, but yeah, Jet JS300, check these things out. Check out Jet guitars because you will not be disappointed. They are redonkulous. Okay, so moving along to this guitar. This one is my first ever Fender. Uh, this is a 1989. Um, technically, it's, technically, it's a Squire Fender hybrid because um, it's got a Fender, Fender Silver logo on it, and it dates to 1989. But technically, it's a Squire. But technically, it's not. It's a really weird one. This one is. It's very, very strange. But and originally, it was electric blue. Uh, I don't know if you're able to get in on this queen here, the uh, the blue. Can you see it at all? I don't think you can. You can just about. Yeah, actually. cool. Because it was originally electric blue, but somebody's refinished it in black right over the top. So it's absolutely caked in lacquer. 
but it's a great guitar, sounds amazing. Uh, the neck is skinny as on this guitar. It's so, so, so tiny, but it's so comfortable. We've got Goto machine heads. Uh, all the electrics are Squire, but we've got a Fender tremolo block with Fender steel saddles, Fender neck. Uh, it's it's like a hybrid of the kind of like cheap components and really expensive components, but this guitar's amazing. Uh, plays like a beast as well. There's a really, there's some really cool footage of a trio, the Dayton Trio, playing in 2012 on Mablethorpe Beachfront. Rock out to the Mablethorpe Massive. Uh, and I'm using this guitar. The reason was, can you guess why? I broke a string on my white strap, Mr. White. Can you guess which string it was I broke on it? I bet you can't. Anyway, this was my number two for a long time because my Mr. White and this were my main guitars for years. And uh, I broke a string on Mr. White and had to use this instead, which again, wasn't you know, wasn't anything to be sniffed at. And um, that video sees this guitar and it just sounds just immense, it really does. Anyway, that's that one. So moving on, this Tenneke isn't my guitar, but I'll show you anyway. This is a replica that I did of Kurt Cobain's Vandalism Strat uh, with a Dave Swinson Trio hat on top there. <laughs> um, which you've seen, if you've seen the gig vlog, you know about that one. But this is ace. I love it. It's actually my sister's, but it's here and hung on the wall, and I love it because I, I love Kurt. Uh, I love this strap. So it looks amazing. So uh, that's what that is. It, I, I remember I, it, it, when I got it, it needed fret level, and this is the first guitar I ever fret leveled, and it plays like an absolute beast now. I, 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 was, I was so impressed with myself. I was like, yes, I fret leveled things. So and it was like the, it was like the, the dry run, if you will. Anyway. Love this guitar, looks really cool. I love that sticker, so cool, and the gaffer tape, so cool. Anyway, it's actually got a Seymour Duncan humbucker in it as well, and it sounds like Kurt, sounds beastly. Okay, so uh, moving along, that's Prince Vigo there. Prince uh, Lamp. Prince Lamp, yeah, I'm going to get a great <laughs> thing here. Anyway, moving along, uh, I have pictures in this. Let me just remove those quickly, and that, and these. So, here we go, people of the tube. This is where it all started for me. This is my first ever guitar. I got this in 2002 for my birthday. So next year on my birthday, I've had this guitar 20 years. That's insane. Um, this is my first ever guitar. It's a Washburn Maverick series and it's three quarter size. It's really, really tiny. And yeah, it's literally just amazing i love it and i'm, I'm pretty sure I, I i got better quicker through playing this guitar because it was so small the action was super low uh it really accommodated learning it really did and i always re always recommend if people want to get into guitar and they want to learn i don't recommend acoustic i always recommend the, uh, electric guitars to learn on because they're just you know especially if you know three quarter size it just makes it easier this guitar is amazing though. I will do a video on this, um, on its 20, 20th anniversary with me. Uh, but it's it's so cool. Uh, absolutely love it to bits. So before we move on to amps, people with you, uh, me and Queenie were talking last night and I actually realized that out of all the guitars you see, I only have 14, there's still some more to come. I only have 14 guitars that are brand new. All the others I've bought are second hand. <laughs> I only have 14 that are brand new. The rest of it does kind of like second hand ones. Anyway, this is where I started. So, speaking of where I started, that's my first ever guitar. Come down here, please. Come out of the way a bit to see this. This is my first ever amp here. PV Rage 158 Trans Tube Series. This is my first ever amp here. So, that, this amp, that guitar, that's where it all started. And this amp back here, which you can't really see very well, but is there, is a Carlsbro GLX 100. And this is my second ever amp. Uh, when we realised that I couldn't gig with a PV Rage, we got the 100 watt Carlsberg, which I could gig with, but then I got the Marshall MG upstairs and the world changed at that point. So, uh, we'll start over here, my dear, I think. So, starting here, this is a Kent Super Electro amp from the 70s. Uh, it's kind of like a fake kind of mess of boogie in a way. It, 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 does work, but it's dead erratic. I need to get it looked at, actually, because it keeps cutting out. But this thing's amazing. It's basically Jack White in an amplifier. You've got two inputs on it, normal and overdrive. You have an overdrive input. And basically, you've got a volume and a master volume. And this is your EQ section here. You've got just basically a four-band graphic EQ, single speaker, 
uh, I think it's an 8-inch speaker. Or is it a 10-inch? 10 10-inch 10 speaker, sorry. But it's really cool. I just love it. Kent Super Electro. And this is made in Japan. Really, really cool amp. Okay, moving along. This is a Marshall Master Lead Combo. And this thing is ridiculously amazing. Well, it's 212 Combo from the 70s again. Or is it the 80s? I think, pretty sure it's the 70s. And it's just a beast. It's basically a plexi. In a, it's basically like a blues breaker. It sounds absolutely immense. It's got a little bit more compression uh, on it when it's cranked and dimed, but it still sounds amazing. And I love the way it looks. I love the black panel. I love the fact that a bit of the, the, the logo is missing. So it's technically a Narshall. Uh, two, I forget what the speakers are, but they're just black. They just look so cool. But this amp's amazing. It's 100 watt as well, so it's louder than all hell. Absolutely amazing amp. So moving on top, this is a Marshall Valve State VS uh, VS 65R. So it's basically a, the 65 watt combo rehoused in a small box plexi head by my friend Andy at FA Guitar Cabs, uh, who you'll see more of his stuff in a sec. But um, this is really really cool. Uh, I love this amp a bit. So I actually sold this amp and then bought it back because I missed it. Uh, but yeah, this, this, this amp's amazing. The overdrive channel on this thing is so cool. This is actually a hybrid amp as well. It's actually got a preamp valve and it's got an ECC83 in it. Uh, but it sounds amazing. Love it to bits. There it is. Okay, uh, moving down here. Technically, you shouldn't see this one, but I thought I'm going to show you this one because I'm hiding a few things. But anyway, uh, you'll see them soon. This is a Fender Bronco amp and I will get to a review of this amp, but this is a little 15 watt solid state one six inch or eight inch speaker combo and i've been after one of these things since 2014 and i've just they're just really hard to find but i finally have one it's basically a two channel copy of a fender champ and like i say i will do a review on this thing and it's actually real tweed and these were made in the u.s these aren't kind of like mexican made or anything like that. these are actually u.s made amps and they're really really awesome so uh, but you will see a demo on this soon. Sounds really cool, but I'm going to do some modifications to it before I demo it, and I'll tell you about them when we get to a video. But love it to bits. Really cool little tweed amp. So speaking of tweed, feel the need for tweed. <laughs> Fender Pro Junior, uh, 15 watt full valve amplifier. One of my very few full valve amplifiers. I think I've only got two actually. Yeah, there's only two, and this is one of them. Uh, I have toyed with the idea of selling this thing, but every time I kind of like toy with the idea of selling it, I kind of go, no, and I just can't sell it. So it's here for, for good. But I do love this, this amp. It sounds amazing, especially when you crank it to 10. Leave the tone all the way down on zero, crank the volume to 10. This thing just screams. Absolutely amazing. Love it to bits. And it's got lacquered uh, tweed on this one. This is actually a Relic series that Fender did. Uh, I don't actually know much about it, but I think it's from 2005, this one. But it was actually a relic thing, so there's like a fake kind of like drinks bottle, drink uh, kind of stain on it, and it's all relic, basically. Like The lacquer's made to look old. And uh, you can you can see the difference in colour. Yeah, but, yeah, this is real tweed. That's real tweed as well, but it's lacquered and aged. You can really see the difference in colour. This one looks like a Lazy J. Anyway, and it sounds amazing. And it's louder than all hell. This thing is this thing is easily giggable even at 15 watts this thing is giggable it's got good headroom as well so it doesn't break up easy so it takes pedals really well anyway fake tweed amp mr sub-zero these amps are amazing i got this uh last year i think 2020 uh and this thing is amazing absolutely amazing they're like 80 90 quid these amps and they're just stunning highly recommend these this is the v35 rg the reverb's great, the distortion's great, the clean's great, great, takes pedals like a champ. Amazing, amazing amp. It's not real tweed though, this is kind of like fake pseudo tweed, but it feels like it. Yeah, no difference in sound. Anyway, um, but yeah, sounds amazing. Great amps, really recommend the Sub-Zeros. Uh, so, uh, moving on, we'll go here now. So, PV Rage you already know about. Marshall Master Lead 12. These things are ridiculously amazing. Uh, they just, yeah, they are what they are. Uh, so cool. So uh, let me move the Zenta out of the way and we can see more. So got one, got two. So I've got another one as well. So this is the first one I got. And then I got that one down there secondly. So uh, moving on, next amp. This head, this cab. 
This is a Tysco Audition 15 watt amp. So you've seen the 3 watt one over there. This is the uh, the 15 watt uh, head and ca cab thing, and it's so cool. I love this thing. And uh, we have a video on Queenie's channel where we both play through the same amp, and it sounds really cool. Anyway, that's that one. Moving along. Vox Escort bass amp and Vox Escort guitar amp. So this is the, uh, the Escort 50 bass. That's, got, that's the Escort 50 lead down there. I have the set, and I was really toying with the idea of selling this bass one, but it's so good for pedals because it's just clean all the way to the top, and it's loud, and it's an amazing amp. It's a really nice bass amp. I really like it as a bass amp as well. But the Vox lead is amazing. This basically covers my desire for Vox amplifiers, although I still do want the AC30 valve reactor at some point. Anyway, uh, moving along, uh, we'll go here now. Fender Stage 100 was one of my f favorite Fender amps until um, the Tone Masters, but still is definitely one of my Fender favorite Fender amps of all time. 100 watt uh, free channel amp with inbuilt effects, inbuilt reverb, 100 watt. This thing is so loud, it's unreal. It's got 100 watt Celestian speaker in it as well. Sounds immense. So that's that one. So moving along uh, to the Monolith as Queenie uh, named it. So down here, start with, we've got a 1971, I think, Marshall Cab. Moving up, this is a 1968 Marshall Cab. Then moving up, this is a Marshall Studio Vintage Plexi. Uh, I had rehoused in a full-size Plexi head box, but it is the Studio Plexi. It's for 20 watt small uh, head version, but I've had it rehoused by my friend Andy, FA Guitar Cabs. Um, into full size one so basically that's and it's literally my dream plexi this is my only other that full valve amplifier that I own absolutely amazing just and it looks so cool in full thing I always have it jumpered as well um, but it's so cool this amp is amazing it sounds great you can crank it and you get the it's still louder than all hell but it's great it really is and on top of that is a Marshall Flexi this is a Marshall MG100 uh, uh, chassis rehoused in a super lead headbox. Again, FA guitar cabs. Um, and this is my second ever Marshall MG. I bought this one uh, in its original box as a backup for the, the fish when I was still gigging the fish. And then when I retired the fish, this became my number one. And then you'll see number three in a bit. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And uh, I think that's it for now. If uh, this room, I think that's everything. So, uh, so yeah, it ain't over yet. Oh yeah, it ain't over. Okay, okay, people, tube nearly there. Uh, we are coming to the end now. This is the last load of guitars, including a very, very special one, which I'm to show you. So let's get on with it, shall we? So first guitar is the Oswald John Strat Mark III. This guitar is amazing. Love it to bits. Just a ridiculously amazing guitar. This one. Nothing more. Nothing more to say. Uh, just an amazing guitar. Okay, so next guitar is this guitar. Remember I was saying about a, a Tysco guitar uh, that I got in replace of the 7001, which I didn't dare play because it was a bit more kind of, it was too clean. Uh, this is its replacement, basically. This is the one I can play. And I got this from a, a guy called Doc, the guy called Dr. Nerd as well. I got this in a trade as well. And this one's a bit more beaten up. And um, as a result of that, I, I don't worry about playing this one so much. So I'll, I will do a video on this at some point, but this guitar is amazing. It's a tie score audition. Uh, this one doesn't have a truss rod, but does have a steel reinforced neck, but it technically doesn't have an adjustable truss rod. Uh, but it's great, great guitar. Love it a bit, love it a bit. All right, moving on to the rack here. Okay, so first up in the rack is the Tokai White Custom. This thing is just immense, and I have a video planned with this very, very well soonish, with uh, with something else. It'd be very, it should be very interesting, I think. But this guitar is amazing. I, I'm so happy to have a white custom. I've wanted a white custom forever, and this one just fits the bill really nicely. I love this guitar to bits. It's amazing. It sounds great. Weighs more than the Titanic though, but it's an amazing guitar. Okay, so moving on. Next guitar. Actually, I'm just going to do all this because it'll just be easy. There we go. Next guitar is the Revelation, what's this? The RLP3. 
Uh, if you've seen the video on this thing, it's basically just like a Stratocaster on steroids and it, with a stunning burst that looks like Scott Gorham's 57 Les Paul. Uh, it looks amazing, sounds amazing, is amazing. Love this guitar's bits. Rules. And it kind of quenches that want and desire for P90s as well. Okay, moving along. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to rush uh, this bit a bit, people on YouTube, because it's quite yeah, you because know, this video has already been long. Okay, so next up is one of the best guitars that I own. This is the Oswald Red Strat. Uh, this guitar is just absolutely means the world to me. This one does it. it um, I will never be without this guitar. Uh, I just won't. It's just ridiculously special to me. I love it to bits, and it's amazing, and it's a hardtail. Uh, it's got my friends Marja and Nicole on the back there. Um, but this thing is amazing. The neck on it's amazing. I love it being a hard tail. <sighs> There's nothing more to say. It's just amazing guitar. Okay, so. Move along. Fender ST62 refinished by Golden Age era uh, guitars. This is literally the most perfect sunburst strat I have ever seen in my life. Um, it just looks and feels and sounds and just is amazing. And for a guitar that I bought to just sell again, I was gonna, I bought this guitar to do it up and then sell it. Um, the fact that now I'm never ever gonna be without this guitar, this guitar is gonna be with me for the rest of my life is really cool. The neck on this thing is to die for. The refin is just insane. The sunburst on this is just incredible. And all the lacquer checking, if I get that in the light right, you might be able to see it. All the, like, the lacquer uh, crackling and stuff is incredible. Yeah, Scott, you're a genius, as is Master Nick. So, uh, <coughs> by the way, people, I do have a cold. Uh, so if I sound a bit rough, that's why. It isn't the Ron. No, we've, we've done tests and it's not the wrong, luckily, but I still feel like death. Anyway, my number one guitar, people with tube, the guitar that I kind of like base all others on. If it doesn't feel like this one, I'm kind of not interested. I'm not on about, about sound, I'm not on about playability, I'm on about feel. This guitar has a certain vibe and feel to it when I play it, and I always look for that in all the other guitars I've got. And all the other guitars you've seen here, today have the same feel that this thing has. Some more than others, but this is the guitar that I judge all of us by and will always. And this is by my best friend, bar none. It really is my, my Fender Mexican 60s reissue. Uh, it's just amazing. Recently rechanged that saddles because uh, the old ones are knackered now, but yeah, amazing guitar. Okay, moving along. Next guitar. This is still mental. This is my 1962 Fender Strat. Uh, and thanks to some of you out there and uh, basically me flogging tons of gear, this became a reality and Malcolm as well for, you know, helping. Uh, I don't really know what to say about this guitar people with tube. It's just a dream come true. I never thought I would own one of these things. And I okay, say so thanks to a lot of you out there. I, this is this is now a dream come true, and this guitar sounds and feels and plays amazingly. It's just so good. Um, did used to be Fiesta Red for people who haven't seen this guitar before, uh, but it's been refinished. Non original tremolo, but everything else is. It's been yeah, the, the neck's been oversprayed as well. But dream guitar. Okay, so quickly moving on to amps over here. Orange CR120, need to say any more. Marshall MG, need I say any more? Rock and roll. There is another amp over here as well, which I will get to in a minute. But first off, be with you, may I introduce you to the newest guitar in my collection? It is this one. Are you ready? Big reveal. Oh, 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 oh my God. Here we go, people. Too. This is the newest guitar to my collection. Hopefully, you can kind of see it. This is a 1979 Fender Strat, and I've wanted a 70 Strat for a long time. I used to own a 77, but it, it had to go uh, to help me fund buying my Gibson R7, which I no longer own either. But either way, uh, this guitar is amazing, and uh, the next video on this channel you'll see will be this guitar. But it's just incredible. This guitar is. I the moment I touched this. I knew I had to have it. It's just that good. 
and um, I just love it to bits. And it does kind of like, again, gets rid of that need of and want of a 70s strap. This just does it all. And I love it to bits. And uh, I've I, I managed to get that guitar, this guitar. I've got to put it down, people, because I'm, I'm, I'm so low energy. I, I can't pick things up for very long. I got that guitar with inheritance money from my, uh, my nan. Uh, she passed away in 2019 and I uh, we, we all got some money from it <laughs> and um, I do apologize for I've got to have a drink but um, we, 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 got, we all got some money and I put mine away thinking one day I'm gonna spend that on a guitar and it's gonna be a guitar I'll never get rid of and that's that one always not what it seems though people YouTube when this guitar arrived it was natural finish, black scratch plate, black pick covers, black knobs. I've refinished, refinned this to look like this. Uh, I've also relicked it as well. Uh, but and a lot, I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, what have you done? But I did it because, like I say, this guitar is never going to leave me. I wanted it to look uh, like Jimi Hendrix's and my friend Nicole Strat. So that's why I did this. And again, this guitar is never going to leave me, so I'm not bothered about resale value or anything like that. I'm, it was cut up anyway. You'll see in the next video how this thing used to look. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't a factory showroom condition guitar when I got it. It's got a brass knot put into it. It's been routed for a humbucker, uh, routed for two other pickups as well. So it wasn't a showroom condition guitar when I got it, but I just had to have it. It, it just felt so right. And again, this is 79 and it just, it's just absolutely amazing. I absolutely love this guitar to bits. So uh, there's one more amp to show you people the tube and it's this one. And like I say, uh, you'll see more of a 79 in the next video. I'm a bit edgy about leaving that. Ah, there we go. So one more amp, and it's this one. That's a diffuser light. Um, there it is. So, oh, this is the Fender Super Reverb Tone Master, and this has gone in as one of my most favorite amps of all time. I absolutely adore, love, and cherish this thing. It's absolutely beastly. I love it to bits. Sounds amazing, feels amazing, takes pedals like a... Just a, uh, I don't know. It's just amazing. Anyway, this is the this is the last thing in my collection. What you see behind you are Queenies. Uh, they aren't mine. Anyway, people, you. Um, there you go. That is my guitar collection. Twenty twenty. Uh, I do apologise about the camera there. Twenty twenty. What are we? Twenty twenty one. I can't think straight because I've barely slept. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. This last part was a bit rushed, but again, not feeling great. Really sweaty and hot and uh, don't have a lot of energy, but hopefully you've enjoyed, hopefully, hopefully this video has been enjoyable. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of guitars on a lot of amps anyway. Uh, anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching PeopleTube. I'll see you again. I'm off to lay down <coughs> and die. Um, I'm exhausted now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vid. I'll see you again for another one. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening until I see you again on, well, next video is gonna be the, the 79 Strat and I just love that thing so much and definitely is one of those guitars and I'm happy I was able to get that with the money I got from my nan because I say it's just one of those things that kind of like will never leave me so it's really really cool and it's it's nice to put that money to something like that instead of it just kind of like being fritted away on, on something else uh, it's nice to look back and go well that's what I got that with anyway thank you much for watching people tube have a great morning afternoon good evening uh hope you feel better than I do and I'll see you again have a great one goodbye now thank you.